Hello and welcome back to Lawrence Plays. Today I've got something a bit different. I was given a dodgy 1TB external hard drive to take a look at because it wasn't working the way it should. At first glance it looks fairly normal, although having a USB-A socket on the side is definitely incorrect for a USB slave device. It should have a B-type connector, typically a USB 3 micro B like this one. That said, my current hypothesis is that there's probably nothing wrong with the caddy itself, it's the drive inside it that's dodgy. The other warning sign is this sticker on the back, basically saying in five different ways, don't format this disc or you'll break it. Now I'm pretty sure there's no legitimate reason to prevent an end user formatting a drive. If it had been initially set up with encryption, perhaps that would break the encryption system, but the drive shouldn't have any problems with that. So that was definitely a first warning. I thought I'd just connect it up to my computer and see what happened. As you can see, it's not a happy drive. It's also making a high-pitched whining noise that doesn't sound healthy. I tried using FDisk to scan for partitions, but that failed completely as you can see. I also tried plugging it into a Windows computer. That worked more or less, although it was still making dodgy noises, but after copying a certain amount of data onto the drive, it disconnected with an I.O. error. I've heard in the past of cheap USB memory sticks that claim to be 32 gig, but are actually just 2 gig sticks with dodgy firmware, making them tell the computer that they're bigger, and then just losing any extra data that's copied onto them. I've not heard of this happening with hard drives, but it seemed quite possible that something similar had happened here. That would explain the warnings about formatting them and Windows choking when it got beyond a certain amount of data copied onto the drive. Obviously, the next step is to take the drive apart and see what's inside. This is more or less what I expected from an external hard drive caddy. There's a small board at the end which translates between SATA and USB with the drive connected to it. The drive, however, looks a lot less professional than I'd expect. The two code numbers on there don't get any hits from Google, and there's an obvious lack of branding on it. And they also can't spell label. When the drive is turned over, however, some slightly more professional stickers show up. From searching for codes on these, I discovered that the board is a Seagate part, so I suspect the entire drive probably is too. The part number on the drive sticker doesn't hit on anything, however one of the smaller numbers matches with some 120 gig drives I found on eBay. So, I believe what's happened here is that the drive has been picked up second hand, perhaps pulled out of a failing laptop. It's had its firmware modified so it reports to the computer that it has one terabyte of space available, and it's been shipped out in a caddy at a too good to be true price on eBay. It's also possible that it was all just done through editing the partition information, so the drive is a perfectly normal 120 gig hard drive. However, Given that my Linux box refused to read it at all and just gave me a load more I.O. errors, I think it's probably worse than that. I told the original purchaser that the drive is a scam and, surprise surprise, the eBay shop that sold it has now disappeared. A claim has been sent through to eBay, but who knows whether they'll honour it at this point. I guess that's the way the scam works. You sell a load of dodgy drives, take the money and close the store before most of the people who bought the drives use them, or, or at least before they use them beyond the capacity that actually exists. So, the moral is uh, if you do buy drives that are surprisingly cheap, make sure you fill them up with data and then try copying at least some of it off again so you can check it as soon as you get the drives, just to make sure they're legitimate. Thanks for watching, and I hope you don't find yourself saddled with a dodgy drive. I'll see you next time.